All right, against odds time, playing some Bantle of Wits Pod. <laughs> oh, that was bad. That was very bad. Well, look at all those lands. I don't think we can keep that. All right, I guess that's reasonable. And a counter spell that we can't cast. I guess we put that to the bottom for now. We can just try to get a quick Battle of Wits with Enlightened Tutor. Oh, it's Eldrazi. Hey. Well, let's play Stirring Wildwood so we can hopefully have access to Enlightened Tutor before it gets Thought Knot seared. Yep, there's a Thought Knot. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. Maybe they take Lotus Cobra or something and don't. They gotta realize when you look and see 240 cards in a deck, you gotta know it's Battle of Wits. They leave the Enlightened Tutor. Well, now we can go Forest into Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Seagate Wreckage. We gotta take our beats here. We can't chump. See what our opponent has. Hopefully not the... Oh, they don't have enough mana for the Endbringer. Um, okay. Thorn of Am Amethyst. Something like that. Now let's just go Lumbering Falls Attack, I guess. We're probably just gonna Enlighten Tutor here. Another Thought Knot. Well, let's Enlighten Tutor. Ooh. Ooh. Detention Sphere seems sweet. <laughs> Get the old two-for-one on the Thought Knots. So I get to take something from our hand, probably Sun Titan, but then we get to untap and get rid of both Thought Knots and draw two cards. That seems good. I guess they could maybe kill one of their own Thought Knots, and then we can always Snapcast her back to Enlighten Tutor eventually. Matter Reshaper, all right, sure. I'll draw Z Temple, and nothing. Well, there's our D-Sphere, so let's just Detention Sphere. Hit both Thought Knots. They leave the battlefield, we draw two cards. Ooze and Brainstorm. All right, Breeding Pool tapped, past the turn. So we are kind of a land away of just doing it. Oh, come on, let's draw land. Uh-oh, what's this? Chalice on one, Ugh, that stops Enlightened Tutor. Gonna make it harder for us to find our Battle of Wits. We can't just flash back this Enlightened Tutor. Thought not. All right, let's uh, run the Snapcaster out there since it can't flash that back anyway. They can take our Brainstorm, which we can't cast anyway. And then if they attack with Matter Reshaper, we will snap off a block and exile both creatures with Ooze to make it a 4-4. Sweet. That works. Let's see what they hit with Matter Reshaper. Another Thought Knot. But we're staying around. And we're going to have a 4-4 Ooze at the moment. You have my Coast. Yeah, I guess we play it. We're not going to be able to brainstorm it back anyway. Eldrazi Mimic. If they attack, we'll definitely chump with Land of War Elves so we can get another counter on our ooze. So it'll stonewall. Maybe we should have blocked with a land too. Maybe it was right to fire up Lumbering Falls. Now we get to exile our Land of War Elves, make our ooze a 5-5. Five, five. Come on, not land. All right. Let's hold the land this time. Will they draw a path? Uh, or uh, swords? Oh my god. What a draw. What a draw. Oh my god. Well, now we're probably dead. They get to Thought Knot, hit us for eight, and I don't think we have an out to this. Even if we just rip Battle of Wits, it's too slow. I guess our best draw is another Detention Sphere to get both Thought Knots. Needed one more counter. They have something else, too. Chalice on zero. We draw a Birthing Pod, but have no creatures, and that does it. Well, Supreme Verdict seems like something we would like access to. A couple of swords. And let's try it like that. All right, game two against Eldrazi with Battle of Wits. And this hand's actually pretty solid. Llanowar Elves in a Birthing Pod seems sweet. And we even have a Stoneforge to get a Batter Skull, which also seems sweet. This might be fast enough. I have Ugin, Mimic. Force Will that we can't cast. All right, crack our Flooded Strand, get a Tundra. Maybe we just go Stoneforge, get a, hmm, Batter Skull or Jetty. Let's get Batter Skull and play Avacyn's Pilgrim. That means next turn we can actually cast and activate Birthing Pod or just put the Batter Skull into play. Matter Reshaper, sure. All right, take our beats. Colonnade, tapped, leave up Batter Skull, I think is better than playing Birthing Pod right here. Well, our opponent's got the manas. 
Reality Smasher makes Mimic a 5-5. Five five. Now let's put in Batter Skull. Then I think we'll just double block Reality Smasher. You have my Coast. Um, I think we're on the pick up and put down Batter Skull plan. We can also hard cast a Force of Will. Yumazawa's Jitty. Ooh, they do have a land. So they can't equip it up. Actually, maybe we just kill that. That might be better. We can actually just cord. Let's just cord X2. Get Pride Mage, block, and then just sack it to kill the Jitty. Jitte. Well, on second thought, maybe we just, uh, do we just equip up and start beating down? Eh, let's not. Let's leave up force again. Leaving up force seems good. Thought not. Yeah, I think we'll counter that. I'm just gonna go beat downs. Uh, do we just brainstorm? Eh, let's brainstorm. Lotus Cobra, Spell Pierce, and land. And put back Cobra and Birthing Pod. Play Hollowed Fountain, untapped. Equip up Stoneforge. Get in, gain five. Hit our opponent for five. And then next turn we can think about Birthing Pod. And we have Dismember Protection and Spell Pierce. Urborg. Endless one X6. Makes Eldrazi Mimic A66. Ay. That means we can't actually just attack with our Stone Forge. That's pretty bad. We draw Birthing Pod. What twos do we have? That's another question. One, two, three, four. We could get a Phantasmal Image. We don't have any way of getting rid of that Endless One. Well, let's play Birthing Pod. Let's sack our Land and War Elves. Yeah, let's do that. Stone Forge, get a... Ooh, maybe... Yeah, I guess Jitty's just better. <laughs> Jitty. Can't attack, unfortunately. What's our opponent have? Thought Not Seer. Alright, not exciting. Makes Mimic big. Gets to take our Jitty. Uh, we're still not just dead, though. Another land. Oh, if they have another creature, that would be very bad. They attack with Endless One. Yep, so we'll take six for now. Down to two. We draw Lumbering Falls. All right, so step one is attack with Stoneforge. Gonna block with Mattery Shaper. Gain a life, sure. Or four life. Mattery Shaper reveals Wasteland. Not too scary. Then let's play Lumbering Falls. So we can attack, we can sack Stoneforge. Yeah, let's just pass for now. Stay on defense. Because we want to be able to block, pick up Batter Skull, replay Batter Skull. Even though it feels bad not to activate a Birthing Pod. Opponent's going to go attacking. We're going to block with both. Hopefully they didn't peel a Dismember. Alright, they did not. So we get to pick up Birthing Pod, or Batter Skull. Put it back into play with Stoneforge. We would love to just draw a creature for Birthing Pod. Well, Preordain is something. Let's Preordain. Hopefully this finds us a creature. Uh, Safi's interesting. Let's attack with Batter Skull. <laughs> Gain some more life. Opponent takes a hit. Then let's just play Safi. Sack it to Birthing Pod. Get Eternal Witness. Yeah, let's just get Eternal Witness. Get Eternal Witness. Actually, let's just get Cord of Calling. I think we can live this turn with what we got set up. And then we can cord, uh oh, dismember on Stoneforge. Sure. We got double removal spells, so just gonna gain some life. Alright, we get back Cord. We can't really cast it right now. Hopefully, our opponent doesn't draw something crazy, but we're up to 16, so we're not really in danger of dying. Reality Smasher. Alright, Reality Smasher is annoying. Do we just take 10? Yeah, let's take 10. Ooh, sort of fire and ice? We can cord. I guess we can just pass and cord. Maybe that's the smartest play. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Well, let's attack with Batter Skull. If they want to trade their Thought Knot for a Batter Skull, we can deal with that. All right, we go back up to 10. If we sack Eternal Witness, get Academy Rector, then we can't cord, though. Well, let's just pass and see what our opponent does. Gonna gain some more life. Gain some more life. Because if, if they just attack with, like, Reality Smasher, then we can Cord, get Academy Rector, block. When it dies, we get Battle of Wits, and we win on our upkeep. That's Reality Smasher. All right, Cord time. Let's see if we can get this to resolve. 
I mean, it should. This looks like a mono black deck. So, Cord X4. Get Academy Rector. We're going to do it. We are going to... <laughs> We're going to do it. Academy Rector blocks Reality Smasher. When it dies, we get to exile it, search for an enchantment, put it on the battlefield. And that enchantment is going to be Battle of Wits. And we have more than 200 cards in our library. Do you have an answer, Mono Black Eldrazi? <laughs> Can you get out from under a Battle of Wits? <laughs> Are we going to do it? Yes! Our opponent scoops it up. Oh, we overcame the Eldrazi Menace with Battle of Wits. Well, off to a decent start. <laughs> Oh, our opponent said they never noticed that we were playing 240 cards. <laughs> uh, which is understandable. I usually do not check the number of cards in someone's deck either. That's intuition. Well, see what our opponent has. This kind of feels like a good draw. Eldrazi Mimic, of course. Well, Breeding Pool tapped. Are we just dead? Matter Reshaper, attack for three. Endless one, attack for three. All right. All right, down to 17, Lotus Cobra. Hopefully they don't have a Thought Knot Seer and we can get down Bayloth, which is a pretty good blocker against what they have so far. And it gains us four life. Endless one, yep, yep. So we're taking six, but it looks like we're gonna get down the Bayloth, which is big game. So Snow-Covered Forest, add a green mana, Bayloth. Hopefully they can't just kill it, that would be bad. There's the mana. So now they can play Reality Smasher. Endless one X5. So we're taking five, unfortunately. Pluto Delta, add one. Crack it, add one. How do we stay alive? We can just play Knight and Intuition. Um, Play Pluto Delta, add green, white green, play Knight of the Reliquary, pass the turn. How is our opponent going to attack? So how do we want to do this? We can block, block, go to one actually or we can double block maybe we double block this endless one we're still taking eight I don't think we can block with Lotus Cobra they're gonna kill our Bayloth by the looks uh oh is this dismember we could intuition for three lands to make it a four four but then it's still gonna die but we get rid of the endless one alright I guess we gotta let it go so we're gonna be at one at the end of this turn because we gotta crack this Delta and a Ratchet Bomb. Alright, so Crack Polluted Delta gets us a mana. Get a... I guess a t another Tundra is fine. Tundra. Add a mana. Intuition. <laughs> we can Intuition for three Detention Spheres, which gets rid of all the Endless Ones, but if they can kill our Lotus Cobra or have a hasty big creature, then we'd be dead unless we draw an untapped land. We can get three Bring Delights, and then, yes, we found the line. So we get three Bring Delights. So we get a Bring Delight. This leaves it so we're not dead to a Dismember type effect. Add red, I guess. That lets us get our Supreme Verdict. Cast Supreme Verdict. And pass the turn. So we're still dead to a big Hasty Eldrazi. Also pretty dead to Endbringer, unless we draw extremely well. Well, Spike Feeder kind of keeps us alive. That can gain us four life. All right, let's just play Breeding Pool tapped and stay at three. Pass the turn. Because next turn we can Eternal Witness back Spike Feeder, I guess, which isn't the absolute worst. Although we're getting to the point where that Ratchet Bomb is going to be a problem. City of Traitors. Well, we will snap off a block with Spike Feeder, sack it to gain two life. Back up to five. Problem is, all of our converted mana costs are three, and we... Uh, so, Eternal Witness, get back Spike Feeder. Spike Feeder can gain us some more life. They're going to be able to wrath away our board, though, with Ratchet Bomb, and then attack with Endbringer after probably drawing a card here, I would assume. Yep, counter on Ratchet Bomb. All right, go up to nine by removing these counters. Oy. We need to draw a way to get rid of Endbringer, I guess, is step one. Chalice on two. Sort of fire and ice. Well, now we're, now I think we're essentially dead. We can chump for a turn with Lumbering Falls, but there's really no getting out of it at that point. 
I guess we could draw Wrath. Yep, that does it. Aye, well, we took a game off Eldrazi. That's something, at least. All right, Battle of Wits against odds. Zero lander, shipping it. We can we can deal. And Atlanta War Elves? Yeah, we'll put it to the bottom. See what we're up against. Hopefully, we can just play Academy Rector. Forest Birds, go. Island Island, counterbalance. Ooh, Lord. Well, they aren't that good at countering expensive things. Let's preordain, see if they get the random hit with counterbalance. Flooded Strand on top, so we get to preordain. I don't think we want either land. We have plenty of lands. Well, Celestial Colonnade, pass the turn. The problem with Academy Rector is it doesn't really guarantee that it isn't guaranteed to die. Hallowed Fountain, untapped, Academy Rector. We also want to tease out the counter spell, just in case they're going to counter something. They might feel like they have to counter this. Oh, they're going to put a Jace back on top by the looks. Did they put a Jace back? No. So Academy Rector resolves. So if we can find a way to kill our Academy Rector, we get a Battle of Wits. Now they just have Terminus. They didn't have a counter spell before. Oh, we lose our birds though, so we can't Battle of Wits this turn anyway. Arid Mesa. Oh, we get to Knight of the Reliquary. That'd be sweet if it resolved. Knight of the Reliquary, you got a three on top? We kind of match up well against this deck. Treetop Village, go. They do have a Terminus on top though, so they can just Terminus our Knight. But now we're, we are to the untapped Battle of Wits stage. All right, do you have a counter? Ooh, Elish Norn? <laughs> this deck. We know they don't have sevens. Come on! This is the moment of truth! They haven't seemed to have counter spells. They shouldn't have a five on top unless it's fours. They crack it. What does this mean? What's the cracking mean? Oh, do they have, like, Pyroblast or something? Snapcaster. They're gonna Snapcaster a Brainstorm looking for an answer? Come on, whiff! 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 So they need to find a counter to put in their hand, or get a five converted mana cost card on top of their library. Oh, they found a force? They found a force. Monastery Mentor. The good news is we have a bunch of creature lands, and Elish Norn is really good against. You got a one on top, Canopy Vista. And then I guess we just pass the turn, leave up our creature land activation to block a Snapcaster or something. But Elish Norn should win us the game if we can resolve it. Can they really have two spells? They need like Brainstorm, Swords. All right, let's just take the hit this turn. Need a way to get this Elish Norn down. Avacyn's Pilgrim. Oh, they have a Terminus on top, but they probably won't cast Terminus. They're gonna shuffle away the Terminus. There's a Brainstorm, makes a token. Pretty much we need to find something that makes them spend their force and then resolve Elish Norn. And we should win just from that. We can start using our creature lands to block. Oh, they have Entreat? Well, Entreat plus Force is really bad. We have to hope they don't have a blue card, essentially. No land, they gotta have a blue card. Well, I mean, you might as well try it. I'm 99% sure this gets hit by Force. Also 99% sure they're not gonna hit it with Counterbalance. Yep, Force, and they had, what, another Brainstorm. All right, that does it. We had our shot. We got to slam a battle of wits. They just had the answer. Dispels, negates, the glamour, engineered explosives. Although I like fighting. Yeah, we'll get rid of, we'll just even the pro white swords and try it like that. And all right, miracles again, game two. Ugh, another zero lander. Well, we have cards we can play. All right, keeping it. There's battle of wits, worth a shot. So tropical island, birds of paradise, pass the turn. Island, no top, that's nice. So now we'll go scavenging ooze, stirring wildwood, pass the turn. So another one of those games where we might just get to slam a battle of wits and hope for the best. We also get to start beating down, which isn't horrible. And a spell pierce, all right. Ooze, get in the beats. Windswept teeth, I was meaning to click stirring wildwood, but I guess we'll crack it and get a Tundra and play play Safi. Got a two on top. They do randomly have a two on top, and it's a counter spell. Flooded Strand. Get a counter on our Scavenging Ooze. We'll have Stirring Wildwood as our backup plan. Yeah, we're not going to counter this Brainstorm though. And Predict. Let's just Spell Pierce to Predict. Oh, they have a Wear Tear on top. Well, that's a bummer. So they're going to mill the Wear Tear 
and draw two cards. Ay! Minus three mentor for our opponent. So do we just go for it? We know they got a counter spell. Yeah, let's go for it. If they have spell pierce or force, then we're then they got it. But they don't have the mana for counter spell. Uh, they're gonna brainstorm and what? Put a force on top. You got a force. They do. Ah, uh, our opponent is it's getting it all. So they had counter spell, force, and brainstorm. And yeah, let's play Lotus Cobra. So many brainstorms. Well, at least our opponent is running out of brainstorms. Gonna put their counter spell on top, I'm sure. Yup. Well, that's a bummer. All right, pass the turn. Found a top. Not really any reason to even try countering it, because we know we can't. Because they will hit it with a counter spell. Activates top. Cracks flooded strand. Activates top again. Flips top. Ponders to draw the top again. Replays top. Well, I guess we try to negate. Maybe they messed up and didn't put the counter spell back on top. I don't know what else we can really do here. And they have a pyroblast, of course. Hey, well, that's fun. We get to play a lot of things. We get to do some attacking. What do we draw? Phantasmal Image doesn't do anything great at the moment. And I think that means we're dead. Yep. Alright, against odds, Battle of Wits in Legacy. And we got the ramp. We need a Battle of Wits. Let's just Wooded Foothills, Crack It, a Tropical Island, and Arbor Elf. I guess we could just go big with Gavany Township. Could that work in Legacy? Swift Spear. Well, Wall of Roots is a good blocker if it resolves. Ooh, Sun Titan? Sun Titan is big. Do we want to pay life? Alright, Temple Garden, untapped. Wall of Roots, untap. Arbor Elf. And in theory, we can Sun Titan next turn. Another Swift Spear. Probes. Here comes the attack. Block. Man, getting Sun Titan dazed feels really bad. I guess another option is just play Gavany Township and pass. We don't get it back anything that great with our Sun Titan anyway, and just put a bunch of counters on things, and Brainstorm, potentially. Alright, there's a Brainstorm, pumps the Swift Spears. Opponent's probably looking for a land. There's a land. Goes to attacks. We are just going to block with Wall of Roots again, play it safe. Go to 12. Cracks Misty. They have a Delver or something. Grim Lava Manta. Alright, so let's green, untap, white, untap, white, green, put a plus one plus one counter on everything, and then brainstorm. Detention Sphere is pretty sweet. Uh, let's put back Moreland Haunt and Hollowed Fountain. Untap, play the planes, white, blue, colorless, detention sphere. Opponent's gonna force detention sphere, pitching a Delver. And we are just going to... Do we pass and play defense? Yeah, probably best to pass and play defense. Because we can Sun Titan back a Detention Sphere next turn, most likely. Opponent's going to shoot down an Arbor Elf. They only have four cards in hand. Goes to attacks. I think we just block a Swift Spear. Going to Bolt. Alright. Sure. It's annoying, but not deadly. We take two, down to ten. We might go down to eight for Hollowed Fountain if we don't draw another mana source or something better. Oh yeah, we have Moreland Haunt. Alright, so now we get to Sun Titan. If this gets hit by days, I'm going to cry. I guess Force is also pretty annoying. Oh, they have another Force? Oh, they had double Force. Well, now we're actually kind of in bad shape. Our opponent's out of cards, but we're out of action. We need a Thrag Tusk or something. Snap off a block. If they kill our wall, they kill our wall. Lightning Bolt, our face, and then they can use Grim Lava Mancer to shoot down the wall. Well, we're looking for Thrag Tusk, Worm Coil, something like that. Court of Calling, we don't even have the mana to cast it, and that does it. Oh, uh, boy, that was close. Sideboard wise, Engineered Explosive seems alright. Do we want Dispels? Probably. Get rid of Pestermite, Calming Verse, Karmic Guide. Mm, try it like that. Alright, we're on the play against Delver. Ugh. All lands and bring to light. I don't think we can keep that. That's just too slow in this format. Well, this might be alright. 
Sun Titan is just way too expensive at the moment. So Tropical Island passed the turn. The problem is we don't have a way to just deal with a turn one Delver. Well, let's spell pierce the probe. I don't really want our opponent to see our hand. Grim Lava Mancer. Ooh, Birthing Pod. Well, let's play our tap land. Brainstorm. No lands. Put back a Dispel and a Bring Delight. Crack our Flooded Strand. Get it. Whoa. Get a Tundra. And pass the turn. Ponder for our opponent. We'd love to draw the lands to get this Birthing Pod down and then draw some creatures to use with it. Opponent finds another land. Volcanic. Down to 18. Alright, Stirring Wildwood, it's tapped, but it is land. Price of Progress seems pretty good against us. Here comes the Lava Mancer. Another Lava Mancer. Colonnade, tapped. Alright, just pass for now. Next turn we might be able to think about getting down a Birthing Pod. Take another two from Lava Mancers. Opponent's down to four cards. True Name Nemesis. Well, that's going to draw out a counter spell. Fortunately, we don't have another blue mana, so we can't spell or er, dispel. Yeah, that's bad news. That's a fast clock. Big draw. Intuition. Let's play Birthing Pod. Now we need to draw into creatures, <laughs> and we need to draw into them soon. If we can start going up the chain of our life gain creatures, we kind of have a chance. Brainstorm for our opponent. Here comes the beats. Come on, creatures. Creatures for Birthing Pod. One drop, two drop, I don't care, as long as it's a creature that I can resolve. Bring to light is as far from creature as it gets. Well, I guess we gotta pass and hope we stay alive. We get got by Lava Mancer, down to nine. We might just be dead. Swift Spear, are we dead? Doesn't attack with Lava Mancer. Lightning Bolt, we can dispel that. Brainstorms. Well, if they find another bolt, we're just, or actually just another, uh, well, yeah. A bolt or a spell into a land, because then they could Lava Mancer. We're in rough shape either way. And they found another bolt. I guess this can kind of keep us alive. We can Intuition for three Force of Wills, pitch the Bring Delight. So we get a Force, Force the Bolt, pitching Bring Delight. Hope we untap and draw a Thrag Tusk. Or a Kitchen Finks. <laughs> or Battle of Wits. All right. Not this time. All right, against odds, Battle of Wits in Legacy, and we have the Zero Lander. Oh, now we have a one... <laughs> we have, like, three colorless lands in our 240 cards. <laughs> and, all right, we'll try this. Lotus Cobra, I think we want lands. Oh, man, Eldrazi again. Never-ending Eldrazi. Oh, our hand is ru <laughs> ruined. Oh, we got wrecked. Oh, game over. Well, I guess eventually we can get to Resto. Oh, that's bad. Trinisphere, sure. Let's keep drawing lands. There's Battle of Wits. Well, if our opponent can't kill us quickly, and we just draw like three lands in a row, we might be able to just Battle of Wits. We can't even cast our Yumazawa's Jite because of this Trinisphere. One of the most confusing cards ever. Basically, as long as it's untapped, everything costs three. Doesn't matter whatever else you were doing, it costs three. Thought not seer. All right, let's scoop it up. We mold to five. I don't really want to show our opponent our deck. All right, game two, Eldrazi again. All right, at least we can kind of cast things. We get to get down a high arc, which gives us more mana. So we're just gonna go forest into high arc, pass the turn. Should be obvious that we're on Battle of Wits, but. Ooh, that's a Stoneforge. Well, let's just uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I think we just get a Batter Skull. And then play the Windswept Teeth so we have access to swords to plowshares if need be. Warping Whale on our Stoneforge. Well, I don't think we want a Swords yet then. Well, Hollowed Fountain untapped. Pass the turn. There's the land. So our opponent has all the mana. Do they have Reality Smasher? Another Mimic. I guess they could have a Dismember. Looks like they have a removal spell of some kind. Yep, dismember. Boo! Yeah, we'll blink it. Alright, we're taking two. See what we draw. Nature's Claim, not very good at the moment. So, Lumbering Falls, pass the turn. We gotta survive this turn. There's Reality Smasher. Makes the Mimics into five fives. The plan is Swords Reality Smasher, discard Boseju. Take a million damage, and then hope that 
batter skull can stabilize us. Windswept teeth. Well, I guess that means we can crack windswept teeth, go to two, cast batter skull, and pass the turn. Hope they can't kill our germ token or play another reality smasher. Endless one X7. Good lord. Well, I think we're pretty much dead. I guess. Uh, I guess we could draw wrath. We have to just chump chump. Hope we draw a wrath. All right. Come on, Supreme Verdict. Two out of 226. And it's a high arc, which means we're dead. Oi! Alright, Battle of Wits is in hand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We need green mana. Green mana for some ramping. Island. Well, we get to Temple of Enlightenment, which might actually be good. Maybe we just draw a green source. Lotus Cobra. Alright, I think we want green mana more than anything. So if it's not a green source, yep, scry to the bottom. I mean, worst case, we get Stoneforge while we're waiting for five mana for Battle of Wits. Oh, Eternal Witness. All right, let's see if our Stoneforge gets countered, looks like. Puts our opponent down to three cards. And we have a Swords. Still really need green mana. We just keep drawing green cards. Counterbalance, well, not going to hit Battle of Wits very easily. If they draw a top, it gets scary. Green mana? That's green mana. Um, let's play Avacyn's Pilgrim, see if they get the blind flip. Force of Will on top. Ooh, that means they are going to be able to counter Battle of Wits, but we might be able to sucker them into countering a Birthing Pod. Brainstorm. Oh man, they're Brainstorm locked. Resto. Alright, I think we just pass and go with Restoration Angel at the end of our opponent's turn. Then we can either untap and birthing pod, or untap and if we draw land battle of wits for the win, most likely. Ponder. This has got to be a shuffle. Yep, our opponent shuffles stuff away. So we get to resto. If they have a Jace on top, I'm going to cry. That would be depressing. Sensei's divining top, but we want to get something down quickly then. Although, they don't have much mana, which is... Oh, they're going to force it? Alright, come on, land! Land? Breeding pool? Alright, unless they have another force. Untapped. Wait. Okay, top on top of the library. Untap. Battle of Wits. You got another force? We know you don't have a five on top for counterbalance. No, they had double force! Seriously? They had double force, double blue card? Counterspell, ponder, force, force was their hand. Well, that slows us down. And they're going to be able to get down a top. Although we have a lot of interesting mana costs, which should work in our favor. Another land. Well, let's go with Eternal... Yeah, let's go with Eternal Witness. Get back Battle of Wits. If they get a four on top, then we resolve Birthing Pod. And that's just as good, basically. They choose not to reveal. Well, you get back Battle of Wits... And then we are also going to slam a birthing pod and hope that there's not a Jace on top. Ooh, we're in business now. I think we got this one. <laughs> Gonna take down Miracles. So we get to jam a Battle of Wits again next turn. If it gets countered, then we get to just birthing pod into another one. Sweet! And we got their opponent scoops it up. All right, got to win. Against Miracles, probably want uh, ways to get rid of... Artifacts and enchantments. Maybe dispels and negates for our swords. Got to cut a few more. Elish Norn can go. I guess we can just go down the swords too. Just go no removal. And all right, not great, but we have a counter spell. Is this turn one top? There's the top. Can they get it locked in with counterbalance? The only good news is our deck has such crazy mana costs that counterbalance and top is not just a hard lock. They can counter one and two drops very easily, but we got threes, fours, fives, sixes, which become a lot harder for our opponent to counter. Do they just have the combo? Looks like. Yep. They just naturally have the combo. That should be fun. Well, island, go. So I guess we're just going to start casting things and hope it works out for the most part. Upkeep, top. Opponent does find a fetch land. Ooh, treetop village is actually pretty sweet. Creature lands seem very good against Miracles. 
They don't have... They have four swords and maybe some snapcasters to get rid of creature lands. They don't have wastelands. And it doesn't care about their top lock, so... Top, top. And we actually have a lot of creature lands if we can find them. Ooh, click is also sweet. Let's just play Temple Garden Tapped and see if we can resolve a click at some point. Be patient with our treetop village. Activates top. That's why people hate miracle players. Well, I guess we keep waiting. Spell Pierce would be better if our opponent uh, didn't have the top lock. Unfortunately, everything's a three in our hand, which is actually not exactly where we want to be against counterbalance top. Would rather have our mana cost split up a little more. Top, shuffles, top. Well, let's spell Pierce Jace. If they flip the top, then we can go with counter spell. All right, they do flip the top. So they're going to reveal the top to counter the spell Pierce. And then we are going to go with counter spell, see if they have a force. Fluster Storm. All right. Well, they have to start plussing Jace or it just dies to Treetop Village. We can't pay for it. So actually, we, wow, they just brainstorm? They're just going to give up their Jace to a Treetop Village. Well, that's fine. So we get to play land, activate Treetop Village, kill Jace. And I think we're just going to set a draw step stop and see if we can get rid of that top with click. Oh. Well, I guess now the question will be, do they have a force? Because we get to click and try to take the entreat. Well, they're going to use their entreat mana to brainstorm to put a three on top. They have another Entreat on top, so they get to make a couple angels. Wow, they messed it up somehow. They put the Entreat back on top, I see. But now they're tapped out? Wow, that actually worked. They had to put the Entreat back on top, so now they're tapped out. And they're going to shuffle away the Entreat, most likely? Alright, they get their top down. But this is our this is our window to get some stuff down, I think. Safi, not great. All right, let's Polluta Delta, crack Polluta Delta, get a Tundra, Safi. See if our opponent has a two on top. They have a click on top, so we can't play our threes, but we get to get to play Safi, play Scavenging Ooze, and then attack with Treetop Village. We might be getting there the hard way. We'll see. A Terminus would still be annoying. We're gonna top on upkeep. Maybe trying to set up the Terminus. Plays another top, so no Terminus is good. They might be trying to Terminus on our turn. Well, let's go attacking. Not activating Treetop. Here comes Terminus. So we're going to exile a bunch of stuff from our opponent's graveyard. Uh, Fluster Storm, Brainstorm, and Brainstorm. Do you want to sack Safi? Probably not. So there goes our creatures. And then we'll just go with Kitchen Finks. Counterbalance says, Vendillion click on top, I'm sure. Would be nice to draw like a five or six drop. Or more creature lands. Wow, they don't have a three drop? That's an interesting choice. Since it means they don't have that swords to deal with our treetop village, which seems like the bigger threat. Well, let's attack with treetop village, see what happens. There's the click. Let's us keep our hand. Blocks Treetop Village. We put our opponent to 10. Play Sword of Light and Shadow. Resolves. Pass the turn. Top activation. Come on, 6 drop. Well, Ponder, not going to resolve. Has another top on top. Tops again. Let's draw a 6 drop. That's a 6 drop. Well, let's see if they have an actual hard counter. Because... They should, hopefully they aren't floating a 6. That would be absurd. Sun Titan resolves, which means we get to get back our treetop village. Hallowed Fountain, untapped. See if we can equip this up to protect it from swords. Oh, man. Well, that's a big game. <laughs> oh, can't get hit by swords while they have a Terminus floating. Ooh, and Treat? Is that just lethal? No! Alright, that does it. They get to make a million angels. Oh, we are so close. We get to play first. Hopefully we have a one drop to get ahead. 
That's solid. I like this hand. So we get to forest into birds. No top. Ooh, and that's a removal spell for an artifact or enchantment. Windswept Teeth, crack it, get a Tundra, Knight of the Reliquary, which they're going to have to kill pretty quick. They're just going to force it right away, pitching a Brainstorm. Cracks Flooded Strand, gets an island, cracks another one, well, gets another island. So this is just counterbalance. Let's see what we draw here. Well, let's lead on Avacyn's Pilgrim, see what our opponent has, reveals. Oh my god. A Wear Tear? So that can counter our Deglamour as well. That's bad. Planes. Not a land. Alright, I guess we just pass and stop on our opponent's upkeep and try to Deglamour this counterbalance. Has an island on top. We do need to draw lands. Force pitching counterbalance. Come on, lands! Well, they have a Jace. Well, we get to try to spell pierce the Jace. Hopefully... This should work now. Unless they just happen to have a one on top. They do not. A click. Alright, come on, land! We need a land! Land for the potential win. Well, Arbor Elf is not what we wanted. It's a land, but it takes too long. If we can just get a, a land and play Archangel of Thune, and our opponent doesn't randomly hit a Terminus, they have a blank card and a Vendillion click. Well, let's go for it. White, untap, a forest, Archangel of Thune. Survey says, Flooded Strand on top. Oh man, that's not a Terminus. Vendillion click, blank, drawing a Flooded Strand. Here comes a click. Can take our Venser or our Gifts Ungiven. Or maybe they target themselves. Yeah, they're going to draw the Flooded Strand, get rid of a Wear Tear. That's right. So they do get a clean draw here. Do they hit Terminus? No. There's the Flooded Strand. Windswept Teeth, that's good. Well, let's start attacking. Archangel gets a counter on everything, puts us up to 22. And we'll just pass, leave up our Venser. Uh, let's Gifts. Untap a Forest. I don't, I think this is just gonna be like a value Gifts. So, so many options. Well, I think one option is Birthing Pod. Battle of Wits, of course. Bring to light, Battle of Wits, Bring to light, um, Birthing Pod, and Sun Titan? Why is Canopy Vista in there? Uh, the last card is supposed to be Sun Titan, not Canopy Vista. Or maybe just Stoneforge is better. Let's just get Stoneforge. Battle of Witch, Bring to light, Birthing Pod, Stoneforge Mystic. Yes. So we get two of those. They dump bring, uh, Battle of Wits. Give us Bring to light and Stoneforge. Ooh, that's a pride mage. Well, maybe we just do that then. One, two. Yeah, let's try. Let's try that. Quasali pride mage to get rid of counterbalance. Then we'll just attack with our archangel. Get some counters on everything. Opponent's gonna chump. They're basically they need to just rip a terminus, I guess, as they're out and have a four on top, so we can't just fencer it. Sun so will just pass. Leave up the ability to fencer a terminus, and I think we're gonna beat miracles. They're fighting hard to keep our Battle of Wits off the board, but we've just been able to go wide. We have Lethal on board. And that does it! We got a win! Battle of Wits! Taking down Miracles! <laughs> sweet! Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> oh, my lord. So what did we learn this week playing Battle of Wits? Well, first off... It is really hard to make a competitive Battle of Wits deck just because the nature of Battle of Wits makes your deck inconsistent. Like, you're playing essentially four decks jammed into one, and that means you get some really... a lot of variants and some really awkward draws. Like, you saw in a lot of our games, we had tons of lands or no lands, or we wouldn't find a Battle of Wits or a way to find a Battle of Wits or the certain creature we needed. So, it's sort of like playing this weird singleton format almost just because the deck is so big the odds of you drawing the specific cards are so slim it feels a lot like a commander deck which 
is a blessing and a curse. As far as winning games, it's a curse because you really want to be able to consistently draw your best cards to be a competitive deck. On the other hand, it's really exciting when you rip your one of Sun Titan on the exact turn when you need it, or you happen to draw a Battle of Wits because you know in the back of the head the odds are so bad that when something good happens, it's like winning the lotto, essentially, so you get really excited when these small things happen. Like, even just drawing the right land, like drawing a green source when you need it, like, the odds are not that great compared to a normal deck, so it's really exciting when good things happen with a Battle of Wits deck, uh, just because it is so high variance compared to a normal deck. Obviously, <laughs> our record wasn't great. We won one out of five matches, we won one additional game against Eldrazi. We got two Battle of Wits kills, essentially, out of 12 games. So the odds of actually killing someone with Battle of Wits, and that's being generous and in including the Miracles match where our opponent scooped to us Eternal Witnessing the Battle of Wits back to our hand, I think that should count as a Battle of Wits kill, even though there wasn't technically the Battle of Wits on the battlefield yet. Uh, so, 2 out of 12 games we won with Battle of Wits. We won one additional game just by beating down with Archangel of Thune and Mana Dorks, which sometimes happens. So overall, 20% match win percentage. Reasonable, I guess. <laughs> and a game win percentage a little uh, bit higher than that. We won 3 out of 12 games, so it would put us at 25%. So somewhere in the 20-25% range, uh, I would put it. I Some of the other games... It felt like we were kind of close, but it's really hard to say that we got unlucky. Like, we definitely had times where we were able, able to put our opponent to the test. Like, do you have the Force of Will? If not, we're going to Battle of Wits and win the game. Our opponent often had the Force of Will, but that's the kind of format Legacy is. Like, you can't really say your opponent's lucky because they have a Force of Will, because everyone's playing Force of Wills and holding it to stop game-winning cards. Uh, so, so I don't think we really got unlucky to lose those games, although some of the games where our opponent had, like, double Force of Will, well, maybe a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, it was a blast to play. I, I had fun playing it. I got to play a lot of cool cards, so I was happy with that aspect of it. And I'm fairly happy with how the deck turned out. Like, it's so big that it's hard to even talk about. There's just so many cards and so much going on that I, I don't even know how to really feel about the deck. Is it a good deck? Is it a bad deck? Obviously, it's inconsistent. Is it good for a Battle of Wits deck? I don't really know. Like, it's just there's so many cards in it that it's hard to not have some cool interactions and also have some bad cards just because you have to put so many cards in the deck to make it work uh anyway make sure to check out the bonus feature for this against the odds featuring my attempt at a battle of wits draft in ninth edition and make sure to check out the website uh this is where you'll find the article for this against the odds you will find the voting or poll for next week's against the odds Tons of other awesome content, decks, prices, metagame, strategy, pretty much everything and anything you could want related to Magic the Gathering. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to click that like button and the subscribe button that's about to pop up on the bottom of your screen. It'll keep you up to date on all the latest and greatest in video content on mtggoldfish.com. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed our Battle of Wits and Legacy videos, and I will talk to you soon.